Hi, this is Mike Henriksen from Strata 2014 in Santa Clara. I'm here with Anjul Bambri. Anjul, how you doing? Yeah, nice to meet you. So you're with IBM yes. in the Big Data Group? That's right. I... And you are the Vice President of the Big Data Group? That's right. Okay, so you gave a talk today and you talked about in Hadoop analytics. Mm -hmm. Can you unpack that a little bit? Because that's, sure. that's a new term that I haven't heard, in okay. Hadoop analytics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's, um, you know, a lot of folks as they talk about analytics, there is an underlying assumption that the data is going to be moved to where the analytic functions or capabilities live. And, uh, you know, given that we are talking big data here, uh, which is, you know, people throw the petabytes terms in there, um, that is not data that you want to move around. Right. So, so when I um, talk about in Hadoop analytics, that is in place analytics. So the analytic functions, capabilities, they have to come to Hadoop. And so it's, it's running those where the data lives as opposed to moving this data around. Okay. Um, so you know, just like in databases, we've had in database analytics or right? in memory in memory database analytics, right? So um, for the different, you know, for this large scale data, the large scale analytics has to be done where the data is, and and that's in Hadoop analytics. Okay. So to do that sort of uh, in database analytics or in the Hadoop analytics. Mm -hmm you need a platform that supports that and mm -hmm. you talked a little bit today about the IBM emerging platform mm -hmm. in the data space. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, talk about the different components that make up that platform? Sure. So, so you know, as, as people have been looking at big data, right, uh, there is that, yes, uh, you know, everybody wants to set up a uh, you know, 10, 100 node cluster and say, okay, I bring in all of this data, but then what, right? How do you get value out of this data? And as we've been working with customers in different industries, um, it was pretty clear that you need almost like a reference architecture um, where you can, and, and so, you know, with all these engagements, we carefully kind of thought through what kind of an architecture or a reference architecture will uh, different industries need so that they can get value out of this big data. And that's, you know, the way we have, uh, uh, I guess, uh, instantiated that is through the IBM Big Data Platform. And at the center of this is what we call as the data lake uh, or the landing zone. And I think everybody is referring to it that way, right? And, and that's where, uh, the capabilities like uh, you know Hadoop and MapReduce come into the picture because you know the underlying storage is a file system, so you can bring in uh, text data, audio, video, geospatial, any kind of data. You can bring in data from uh, your warehouses or any systems of record. You can bring data from systems of engagement, um, and but but that's not it, right? You're not done. Yes, you can store now your petabytes of data. But you need other kind of functional high value components around it, which will also suck data out of this and push data into this. So, you know, if there is uh, a lot of text data that is landing in this Hadoop file system, so you need a text analytics engine which right. helps you extract information out of text, you know, put some structure around it. So, a text analytics engine is going to be one of the value components. Um, to suck data in, you need different kinds of ways to ingest the data. So data ingestures will be a key high value component around it. Uh, similarly, right, once the data reaches a structured form, uh, the best way to query it is using SQL. So you need a SQL engine as another component around it. Um, analytics, right, same thing, that you need analytics engines, machine learning, um, components to really explore and discover the data in this, right? So, good visualization components, and and uh, you know, there's no one size fits all there. Depending on the type of data, you need the right visualizers. So, the key part about uh, this architecture is that every one of these components has to be able to seamlessly be able to access this data without this data really leaving the ecosystem, 
right? Okay. So these components also have to collaborate with each other, right? That, you know, if structured data enters this lake, then as the information extraction or text engine put structure around it, how do you feed that into your SQL engine so that you can use SQL to do heavy duty transformations? Could we plug Watson into this platform? <laughs> yeah, so these are, you know, if you look at Watson, right? The, these capabilities are really what we are calling as the foundations that will help build Watson, right? Because you need ways to ingest data, you need ways to store that data, you need ways to explore and discover information. Uh, you want to be able to uh, do text analytics on this data, right? Which is different from search. Yeah. That you can find the right information in the right context from petabytes of data, so scalability. Um, you want to be able to do machine, not just descriptive analytics on this data, but predictive analytics on this data, run machine learning algorithms on this data, and really eventually get to cognitive analytics and uh, the Q&A paradigm yeah. that, you know, we Watson. all saw with Watson. Yeah. So these, you can see, are really the building blocks of Watson. And, and ultimately, there is you know, customization that is needed. Right. Um, Tailored to each need, yeah. yeah. So you, you said that this platform has kind of evolved from your work with customers and partners mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. If your work with these partners and customers, is there a group that is kind of lagging behind and not understanding the value mm -hmm. and the potential that big mm -hmm. data can bring to them? Mm -hmm. And when I say group, I mean like a, a job type mm -hmm. person, like a, is it finance or marketing or you know some other function mm -hmm. in a company? Is there someone that really should be catching on a little quicker than they are? Mm -hmm. So um, you know that's that's a good question that. Um, I wouldn't say that there is a job function that is lagging, but what is happening is everybody gets that there is big data and I should be leveraging data to make decisions, to service my customers better, you know, the, whether it's the marketing, you know, your CMO or, you know, your CFO, um, you know, how do I optimize my organization, right? So people get that that there is value in big data. And I should be leveraging data from my systems of engagement uh, because that's where the businesses will see the revenue growth. Because you know, if you can optimize those, yeah. uh, you are going to serve your customers better. The challenge is that the technology really needs to get to a point where the lines of business can do or derive this value from the data without really you know seeing the whole gorp of technology right yeah and yeah, and yeah. and right now i think doesn't matter you know obviously at strata everybody is talking about big data so obviously this is a big data community uh, but but where we all have to collectively move to get that line of business be able to that they can sit on their desk and you know have the data talking to them Right? Which, is, yeah. which is where we want to, so when you say is somebody lagging, I, in some sense everybody is lagging because you know the technology needs to help. Availability, right? yes, yes. Um, uh, they're not lagging in their mindset. They know that this is where they want to be. Uh, but how quickly can they get it? You know, can they, I think deriving value from this data is extremely, it's becoming very real, it's very immediate and pressing. Uh, and, and all disciplines are facing it. But can they get it that quickly? Um, I think that's where uh, you know all, all of us technologists have to help really accelerate that. Yes. And, and I think we are, we are on, a, on a, you know, in the right direction. Like with We're the, on a fast pace that yeah, yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. So last question for you, Angel. Sure. If there was one problem in the world mm -hmm. that you could solve by applying data to it, mm -hmm. what, would you, what would you tackle? One problem. 
Um, and I know there's a big list, yeah. but just choose one of them that you personally would want to tackle. I, I think, you know, the, the thing that, uh, the one thing um, that is personally very motivating for me is that big data is, uh, and the technology advancements that are happening, the impact that we can make on, uh, you know, getting our arms around diseases, being able to predict things before they happen. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you make, uh, how do you separate the, the, the signal from the noise there? In that field, I think there is tremendous opportunity there. And, uh, you know, that is something that personally motivates me. Um, yes, being able to give, you know, real-time ads is good, but I want to take this to, you know, how do we solve some of those other problems, which, which are where it is a big data problem. And, you know, the technology is really getting there. So, so that's the one. Your colleagues at IBM Medical are cheering <laughs> right now, the, the people working big data. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. Thank, Thank you. you.